All right, I only had about a minute and a half or so, but luckily I was able to make it back from EAA to our studio, and I'm really not even out of breath. Before the break, we talked hops and props. Now it's time to dive into Rooms of Blooms. Christine Melms Simon is sitting next to me to discuss that. Christine, thanks for being here. Thanks, Nick. First off, just what is Rooms of Blooms over at the Payne? Well, Rooms of Blooms, and this will be our fourth year now, this is a pairing of the Northeast Wisconsin Floral Designers Show in the beautiful and ornate rooms of the Payne Mansion itself. So it's quite a unique setting for a beautiful floral event. When, is it, uh, when does it open and, and how long is it actually going to be on display, if you will, over at the Payne? It will be on display the first two weekends of March, but we've actually added an extra day this week, year. Okay. So it will be Thursdays through Sundays and it will begin February 28th through March 3rd and then March 7th through the 10th again. Who generally participates in the, uh, this type of event? Floral designers from all over Northeast Wisconsin and it's not just Oshkosh and the Fox Valley. We go as far as Green Bay and Hobart and out to Wyoiga and we've got participants from Fond du Lac and Princeton and Green Lake and uh, everywhere in between. It's, it's quite a gathering of the greatest floral talent that this area has to offer. Now, talk, talk a little bit more about the, the, the floral, uh, you know, exhibits, I guess. What kind of, uh, you know, flowers and displays are we going to see? Obviously, I'm assuming one of them is roses. That seems to be the go-to flower, but what else? A lot. I mean, flowers sometimes that you haven't even ever heard of or seen. Mm -hmm. uh, and we never know what we're going to get until the floral designers come in with all of their arrangements. So uh, the surprise element is there for everybody, even us. Um, the public gets to enjoy florals in, in a lot of different settings and ways throughout the mansion and, mm -hmm. and throughout the program. Uh, when they enter, our gallery, which has an exhibit, The Calm Before the Storm right now, of uh, beautiful landscape paintings that are very atmospheric and, and w full of weather sure. events and whatnot, and moody. Um, these are paired with all of the designers. Each designer is given a painting to use as an inspiration to okay. reinterpret as a floral design. And that's just the first part of the program. That's pretty interesting. Because as you move them through the mansion, every single room of the mansion is filled with florals, all the hallways, everything. And then when you get to the end in the Great Hall, we have tablescapes that are set up much like uh, things from Martha Stewart magazine or okay. what Oprah has offered in some cases in town and country. Um, six tablescape tables mm -hmm. set throughout the Great Hall and the floral designers are given these tables, four foot diameters, and then carte blanche with regard to creativity. So what we get there is an amazing uh, variety of creativity, thinking outside of the box, and elements of floral design that some people don't get to see very often. Sure. You kind of mentioned it a, a bit in that answer right there in, in terms of, you know, this is an event that's held in a mansion. How much more does the, the setting kind of pop, if you will, uh, on top of if this was a, a floral exhibit in just, you know, someone's regular house, I guess? It's interesting because when you get a floral show in the setting of an historic mansion, the, the two elements of the historical nature and the ornateness of all of the rooms of the mm -hmm. mansion really help to play up and intertwine with the beauty of the florals. And then the florals enhance the beauty of the rooms themselves. So there's this give and take and this weaving sure. and meshing of beauty upon beauty. And it's, it's just a, such a unique experience to go from room to room and experience this in a different way in every different room. For those who show up and, and, and you know, view the exhibit, walk through the mansion, see all the sights uh, and all the, the, the beautiful flowers, do they have an, a, a way or, or an opportunity to express uh, to anyone, um, you know, via in person, over the phone, electronically, their, their favorites? Yes, that's another interesting aspect to the show because when they get to the tablescapes, that's where we have our People's Choice Award voting. Okay. And everybody gets to vote for their favorite tablescape. 
and then the winner gets the bragging rights of People's Choice Award winner. But not only that, out of all the ballots that we receive, we pick from all of those ballots, one winner gets a $100 gift certificate to the winning floral designer's business. Wow. So is this something that, you know, for, for whoever, whatever the winning, um, you know, floral exhibit is, is that something that will then be incorporated into, uh, you know, the next year's um, rooms of blooms, if you will? Um, not necessarily. Okay. Uh, every year is, is something different. Mm -hmm. And every year, sometimes we get new floral designers okay. and uh, new opportunities. And like I said, we try to provide an element where creativity is key. Sure. And we don't like to put any, any kind of stamp on, on top of it or, or try to put too much of the Payne's input sure. into the, the floral design. And, and so um, it's a surprise. Every time you come, it's a surprise. I know when we were visiting with, uh, with Kelly for the, uh, the Nutcracker in the castle, um, we, we kind of talked to her also about the conservatory, the new conservatory that's being constructed. Uh, and this show is actually going to extend in, into the new conservatory? It is, and we're really excited about this because the conservatory, which is, is built at the rear of the Payne property, mm -hmm. this is the first time that since the inception and the building of the Payne in the 1920s, this is the first time that there's been new construction on the property. And this beautiful element as an addition to the property is in keeping with the theme, the intent of the property and, and its originators, Mr. and Mrs. Payne. And uh, it's just, it's one of those elements that is a whole new aspect and a really jaw-dropping display area for a lot of different events. Mm -hmm. We're really excited about expanding Rooms of Blooms into this setting this sure. year. And there will be a floral installation in the conservatory done by the Payne's horticulturalist, Sheila Glasky. And it will be set within the conservatory with tables around. Mm -hmm. And there will be events that surround that as well then. For those that are interested in this event, uh, where do they go to get more information? And also, what is the cost to, to attend this event? The, the Rooms of Blooms event uh, for um, the mansion and the conservatory mm -hmm. is uh, an admission of $11 for adults and $7 for children. That's very reasonable. And the four days uh, with regard to the timing, mm -hmm. Fridays and Saturdays are going to be extended hours at the paint. Okay. So we will actually open an hour earlier, which would be 10 o'clock then, and go until 7 p.m. And then for Friday and Saturday from the 4 to 7 p.m. slot, there's actually an admission reduction of $2 per ticket. Okay. Can you give us a preview maybe of, of some other upcoming or what else is to come at the, the pain, uh, you know, in 2013? Uh, 2013, there are a number of events that we have planned. Um, come spring, we are going to be having a new exhibit by the world-renowned glassmaker Dale Chihuly. Okay. And Dale has roots in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. He did a lot of his studies here. And then um, in the middle of May, we will have our Festival of Spring. July comes up with the Fair on the Green. Okay. And come next November, we will be involved with our seventh year of Nutcracker in the Castle again. Busy year for the, uh, for the folks over at the Payne. It really is, and oh. I hope a lot of people come to see a lot of the things. Yeah, well, good luck with everything, and uh, Rooms of Blue sounds like a fantastic event. Thanks for being here, Christine. Great. Thank you, Nick. Time to jump to another break. Next, it's almost time to play the music and light the lights. No, we're not talking about the Muppets. We focus on the Oshkosh Area Community Band after a quick timeout. 